Okay. Um, it... When I teach um, singing phonetics and choir phonetics, then people need to change their way of listening. Usually you listen uh, with the left brain hemisphere to melodies, to intervals, and then you have your Broca center for um, processing speech information. And uh, I will do now a hearing test. I sing on one tone um, a bunch of nonsense syllables but I hide a melody in this syllables. So I'm singing only one tone, but there is a melody hidden. It's from German classics and you probably know it. probably only 5 to 10% of people will immediately hear the melody. Those who are trained in overtone singing hear it uh, and ca cannot imagine that other people don't hear it. But those who didn't hear a melody, you can be sure there was a melody. So um, what I need you to do is to change the focus in your brain. You have a left hearing cortex and this is processing melodies, intervals and um, this rational part of music. And the right side, um, the, the hearing center on the right side processes overtones. So the sound in the sound. And now we need the brain to be schooled to, to use this part of information and bring it to your consciousness. Usually this is only part of um, the sound processed for language and you, you f get feelings and things like this, but um, we need to get the actual information from here. So I will reduce the information now. I will sing the same again, but I reduce some of the information. We have three resonance tones in our vocal tract that we can control. There are more, but uh, only three of them are controllable. And the lower two ones are responsible for vowel sounds. So if I change the pitch of these resonance frequencies by uh, changing the shape of my lips and my, t my tongue, then I get, uh, as a result, some vowels, U, E, A, O, and so on. And if I don't move this one, then I get only U, U, E sounds. Then only this resonance frequency moves, and this is what I'm going to do now. Now I showed you the melody and I changed the rhythm to the original rhythm now and I will give you the melody now. It's So it was Beethoven's uh, order to joy. Yeah. And uh, probably about 20% of people already heard it now. But there are still 80% who didn't have an idea that there was a melody. Um, for me, it was a, a long way to understand that people uh, actually don't hear the melody because it's so clear for me. And even others who hear it cannot understand that uh, most of the people don't hear it. So I will go on reducing information so that um, Broca Center, which is um, taking all the information now, all the uh, attention now, gets less information. I skip the consonants. I sing only the vowels now. <laughs> maybe 60 to 80% of people now heard the melody because now we have no language information and the left hemisphere 
um, memorizes the a melody and it can guess there is a melody somewhere hidden in, in the background. Uh, and those who heard the melody from the beginning, they have the melody very clearly, you know. And now I do something for the left 20% who did not hear the melody yet. I will lower the third resonance frequency, which is usually responsible for giving um, the um, impression of a singing voice. It makes um, the, the voice sound bright. It's, uh, it's very high, about 3000 Hertz. And if I lower this by tongue movement to exactly the pitch of the second resonance frequency, I get a double resonance. This has two effects. First, all overtones that fall into this double resonance are a bit louder. And then there's this singing voice information missing here. So this is so strange for our brains that it tries to compare it to something it, it knows from the past. And it will tell you there's a flute melody and a singing voice. So it tells you there's two tones. <laughs> so funny to see now everybody should have heard the melody if not then I cannot help with my uh, with my tools but um, it's so, so funny to see that the information was there all the time but our brain may, makes different things out of it uh, first on what we focus on and then on how it's built some people have uh, um, a bigger hearing cortex on the left side and they don't hear the, the overtones immediately. But those who have a bigger hearing cortex on the right side, they hear it from the beginning on. So everybody hears a little bit different. But I can school your brain now to focus on the right side. And this is important to understand singing phonetics. I will go backwards now and you focus on the same melody. No, it's still there. Now consonants. And now I make the consonants stronger and then your broker center will take some of the information or some of the attention and then stay focused on the melody. And now I use normal vowels, so I, I move both resonance frequencies here. Now I'm saying exactly the same as in the beginning and I hope you now could follow the melody. Mm -hmm.